Hello and welcome back to another video now for those of you that are new here my name's Mel and I'm currently turning this Mercedes Vario into a luxurious camper van and when I finish I shall live the van life dream and go travelling the world on the hunt for treasure so if that's something that interests you then please do consider subscribing to my channel now regular viewers of my channel will know I've spent the last six months restoring this Mercedes Vario getting it into the fantastic condition that you see before you today and now that it's completely roadworthy I can actually start installing the interior and i really do believe the best place to start is by insulating it so today or this week i shall be insulating the inside of my mercedes vario hopefully it won't be as boring as it sounds now to insulate my vario i'm actually going to try and avoid using the classic recycled bottle top insulation i'm going to use as much sealer tex as i possibly can because it is really lightweight it's a really good insulator I really don't like that recycled bottle top stuff. It is horrible. Right, I've already cut this first piece. So let's see if I've got the measurements right and it actually fits. It should fit perfectly in this panel. Fingers crossed, wish me luck. Now I'm gonna pause the video right there because I've just realized whilst editing this video, I didn't quite explain the reason behind me not being a big fan of recycled bottle insulation but rather than explain allow me to demonstrate okay so here we have some recycled bottle insulation this stuff is quite thin but it doesn't matter it will serve perfectly fine for this demonstration so imagine this is on the side of your van insulating your van this panel is your um well your furniture panel say like that now you want to affix something to this panel and to do that you need to drill through it to screw into it so watch what happens when you drill through a panel into this bot recycled bottle insulation and you'll understand exactly why i'm no fan of this stuff oh there we go so there you are it's all gathered up around the drill now the problem is trying to get your drill out there you go snap the drill it's that simple and that easy and look how thick the drill is it's a quite a chunky drill and i've got to admit i didn't exactly mean to do that but i'm glad it happened because you can see just how much it gathers around the drill it can be a real pain and that's why i'm not a fan of recycled bottled insulation but saying that it is really good stuff it does the job really well and it does get rid of some of that plastic from our oceans so uh, don't let this put you off using it just bear in mind don't use it where you might or you you're likely to want to drill through the panel um, into this stuff because look at that i mean that drill bit is not coming out of there <laughs> you're saying with screws as well yeah this it happens to, it's even worse with screws you try and put a screw through it so maybe do yeah, well. look at that you're in my shot dear she's running my shot go check out becky's video she's filming a behind the scenes video for her patreon I'm getting in me bleeding way <laughs> so well worth a view but there you are i think i made my point right back to the video that's it i wasn't expecting you to break it no nor was i Sorry, I said shit. Now, if I've got my measurements right, this should fit perfectly in here. Look at that. It does as well, it fits in really nice. The only thing I've got to do is try and actually slide it behind these panels. So it needs to go up, up, and in, and up. And fit on the lip at the bottom now there are these lips here each side uh, unfortunately so i'm gonna have to cut some of it away let's just see if i can actually slide it up and under sorry about that noise let's have a look. Kind of guessing this acts as a vapor barrier as well you don't need a vapor barrier as long as you seal it with that um, aluminium foil tape 
seal all these holes up as well. This is also going to act as a vapour barrier. Gonna go in. <laughs> Let's do the other side as well. This is a momentous occasion. hoping it would slide behind there and it goes that way a bit. Oh it has. That should go in there. <laughs> Look at that, it's in. Yes. Supposed to slide this way. What? And then I can get stuff behind there in that gap. Yeah, I need a strip of it in there for it to be satisfactory. <laughs> I can't get the bloody thing back out now. <laughs> I've shot myself in the foot, as they say. Right, I'll be right back. I'm just going to try and figure this out. But I've managed to get it out with the pry bar. <laughs> Perfect. Right, and that fits. So if I show you now a bit I mean, I want to get stuff behind there because it's about that much, it won't be insulated. And I'm not too pleased about that. I want it all to be insulated. So what I'm going to do is cut some strips off that lift off of this, put them in here to fill this gap all the way down there. So it's nice and tucked up behind there. I still feel there's going to be some kind of thermal bridge so there's not much I can do about that I'm just going to have to accept that it's a tin can basically um, yeah right let's get some bits and cut them in there and I'll show you what it looks like So there we go, we can just about see that. Look, I've got this little sliver of um, Silatex in there. I'm hoping, I mean, I don't know if it'll make much difference, but it's the best I can do. <laughs> yes, I think that's gonna work. Yeah, and then that is now insulated behind there. Although, like I say, there's this big void here. Let me know what you think, what should I do? Should I put expanding foam in these holes? Obviously start at the bottom and gradually work my way up over a couple of days. Yeah, because there's holes all the way in this, so I could like squirt a little bit in the bottom, leave it a few hours, squirt a little bit there, there, and gradually fill this up with expanding foam. The trouble is, I've heard that that expanding foam can trap moisture and cause rust. There's six of these in this van. Should I fill them with expanding foam? Please do let me know. Leave a comment down below. And while you're there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Let the algorithm know that you enjoy watching my videos. It really does make a huge difference. So I've just learned. I should, I should be asking people to give my videos a thumbs up. I know it sounds a bit cheesy, that's why I don't do it, but apparently I should. It's in. That is it. Easy as that. Too easy really, isn't it? Don't even need any stick pins. Right, there we are. Now we'll go all the way around, seal this completely with that silver sticky tape, and that stuff is super sticky. And that should give us a vapour barrier. No need for that um, foil bubble wrap stuff. I believe that's a waste of money anyway because it's a reflective barrier and if it's up against something it's not going to reflect the heat because there's nothing to reflect it 
that out too. It's hard to know. Shut up, Mel. Right, that's all I've got to do is the rest of it. I won't film that because I think that would be pretty boring. I'll see you when I'm done. Don't forget to leave a comment on whether or not I should put expanding foam in these before I do put the vapour barrier, whatever, up. So by the magic of video editing and YouTube, I should now make this really quick and simple. I've got to say, I'm loving how square this van is. The walls are nice and straight. It's all nice and square. There's no awkward curves. Maybe this little bit here might be a bit of a challenge, but nothing that I can't handle. Um, insulating this van is going to be a real joy. I really am just so stoked how simple and easy this is going together. Right, well, with that said, let's carry on. Um, I've now got to do the next panel. So I've done these two already. I'll just stand here so you can see how square and simple this is to do. <laughs> can you tell I'm excited? Right, let's do these ones now. Now to insulate this panel with the wheel arch in it, I'm going to use the top off cut from when I did the very first panel. And this is gonna make it a lot simpler. It's a smaller piece of insulation. I can maneuver it cut that arch out nice and simple and then once this is slotted into place I will then insulate the opposite panel on the opposite side and that will give me another off cut exactly the same size as this which I will then use to insulate that part of this panel absolutely brilliant which means in short this entire panel will be insulated using two off cuts <laughs> I'm loving this van build I really am this is so good. I wish I'd discovered Vario's years ago. So if you're thinking about buying a van to convert, I highly recommend getting a Vario. Just bear in mind you do need a C1 license or something like that. So there we go. That's simply going to slot in there like that. And I'm pleased with that. And by doing it like this, I'm going to end up with an air gap between the Celotex and the outside of the van. So this is going to give us that nice bit of air insulation between this and any heat coming through there through here will hit the Celotex and bounce back out again to give us that uh, nice barrier it's going to work really well <sighs> yeah this van is going to be great as far as insulation is concerned it's absolutely perfect because of these ribs I'm using minimal insulation in this van because I want it to be as wide as possible I'm not going to go over the top with insulation um, it's quite, frank, quite frankly I think it's a waste of time anyway that's why I've got loads of windows they're double glazed so in the summer I can open all those windows up be nice and cool in here in the winter I can shut those windows and with a 5 kilowatt heater in here it's going to be plenty warm enough that's why I'm not going overboard with insulation I know a lot of people out there are probably screaming at me saying oh you should put dodo mat across here you should fill the void with stuff I really don't think it's necessary so I'm doing it my way you don't have to copy what I'm doing if you want to put more insulation in your van then that's fine you go ahead and do that but, um, 25 mil Celotex for me is plenty absolutely plenty and the nice thing about this as well it does act as a vapor barrier as well I'm not going to be going put in any of that aluminium bubble wrap I do think that's a complete waste of time and a waste of money and I've mentioned this before in previous videos um, so yeah don't shoot me down <laughs> not just yet anyway Oh. 
Right, now let me just quickly explain what I'm doing here. The reason I haven't insulated this right up to here is because this part of the wall is going to be stepped back. So there's going to be my bed is going to come level along here. This part is going to be here, but then it's going to step back, giving me a much wider bed. I'm going to have minimal insulation in this area here, making my bed just that much wider than it would have been otherwise. I do hope that makes sense. I love for my and it's a season of sticks and hair. So your mum, she forgot who I was. This stuff is so easy to work with. So much better than that recycled bottle top stuff. And I've absolutely no doubt it's probably be a, more than likely a better insulator as well. It fits perfect. This is like the width of the Celotex, four foot, isn't it? It's just like the Vario is made for Celotex, definitely. Let's move that out of the way. This piece is going to go up underneath there. We're doubling up on this bottom part. So, this bit, as you can see, is stepped back because I want to panel this level to about here with this I need to put another piece down here yet um, another strut coming down and then we'll have a stepped back panel level with the bed I promise you all of this will make sense <laughs> once you see me start paneling panel in the walls out right, let's see how level this is this will make more sense now what I'm actually doing, what I'm up to. So, yeah, that'd be all right, it's low enough. I thought it was just too high, but it's fine. So there you go, if I put that piece of wood there, you can see the difference. So this panel is gonna be in line with these, okay? Um, Cause I'm gonna have, I think it's 18 mil ply from here down. And then from here, it's gonna step in and then I'm going to have three, I think three or four mil ply up here. And this will give me, stay, <laughs> more length in my bed area, if that makes sense. I can see it in my mind, in my crazy mind's eye. I can actually see what it's going to look like. It's just a little bit difficult to explain what it's going to look like. So I think I'm better off just doing it and showing you when it's done. See you in a minute. So here we are, this is what it ended up looking like. Now I've got to admit, this is at least two days after I filmed that very first clip. It's taken a lot longer than I anticipated. But now that I've got the plywood sort of in place, you can see what I was talking about, having that recessed area for the bed. Hopefully you can see it from that angle. Let me bring you in a bit closer and I'll show you exactly what's going on. It's a little bit dark in here, unfortunately. Oops, I'm on the roof. So there we go, you can clearly see now, you can see that huge recess. Obviously this isn't fixed in place, so I'm gonna put auto carpet on here. A nice wheat color auto carpet. We're not going for black or gray auto carpet, we're having wheat flavored, <laughs> colored. But you can see there's a step here. It's the same on the other side. This is gonna give me a huge bed. It's gonna be really long, the bed. It's gonna go across the van. And obviously the window frames are gonna really set it off as well. By the time I put these frames in the window, like that, and imagine wheat colored auto carpet there. All this will be nice mahogany type woodwork. It's gonna be beautiful, absolutely lovely. Now, another good thing is, Rebecca has come today to help me finish off these panels. This is 18 mil ply and it's a lot heavier than I ex 
expected. My original plan was to actually put 18mm ply this high down the entire length of the van, giving me something nice and strong to bolt everything to. But because of the weight of this stuff, that ain't gonna happen now. I'm just gonna use the 18mm ply to support the bed and affix everything to it that's underneath the bed i.e. my electricals and water tank and all that stuff it's all going to be bolted to this 18 mil ply making it nice and secure <coughs> excuse me so like i said earlier this is <sighs> so like i was saying this isn't actually fixed in place it's only sort of resting um i'm <sighs> <sighs> so like i was saying this isn't actually fixed in place just yet because i have got to cover that in auto carpet also i need to finish off just threatening this bottom board i need to add some angles to the edges so that it fits nice and snug against the side of the bed <laughs> honestly <laughs> I'm just going to go and find some tissue to blow my nose and then I'll, um, the lovely Rebecca is going to help me. <sighs> now because these boards are really heavy, Rebecca's come today to help me manoeuvre these and... <clears throat> and because these boards are so heavy, Rebecca is here to help me manoeuvre these boards in and out of the van and I'm going to use a router just to route off the edges, round them off so that they fit nice and snug against the side of the van because at the minute they're a little bit loose so let's grab Rebecca and not literally obviously because that would be um, harassment in the workplace wouldn't it? She's actually busy filming me for her channel so if you haven't seen Rebecca's channel I've got to stop sniffing here she is the lovely Rebecca <laughs> you're looking very pretty today thank you very much got your wall paint on I have yeah ready Good to night. rock ready to rock and roll yeah. right what are we going to do we're going to take a board out and we're going to route the, edges route of... the edge right. so we need to go and find the router right yeah it just so happens oh the groupie just so happened, young Sean, who's not actually here, has got a router. As coincidence would have it, he's got the right bit that we require yeah. fitted to said router. So thank you in advance, Sean, just yeah. in case you see this. Yeah, we've just, right. We're just going to borrow your router. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, dear, let me help. <laughs> Trying to go in your... Getting a bit keen there. I think. But you want to route this back edge. Yeah, so yeah, just rotate around that edge and this edge. Right, but we also want to flip it so this edge is up. Yeah? No, you took it out. Which way do we take it out? Yeah, this is the edge, this is the outside face, yeah. isn't it? That's so the inside. So yeah, we need to flip it over. Yeah. Good thinking. Good job you're here, isn't it? Yeah. We're gonna do this edge. And that edge. So if we put it on the edge of the desk there like that. We can do it along there. Yeah. Does that make sense? Well, I'd try it on a bit of wood. What, what um, do you want a bit of? A bit of scrap, yeah. Right. Not sure how this works. Anyone know how to use a router? I'll just change the depth of it. There we are. Oh, there we go, look at that. Why not? I don't know how to turn it on though, do you? Oh, look, there you are. Oh, and it should have just a click button. There's a button there, but nothing's happening. Oh, there we go. Perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Is that too much? No. No? That's how we want it. We want it so it's... Curved yeah, it's, a, it's, um, yeah, it's the right angle, see? It's oh, a, okay. Camera's gone over there for some reason. There you go. <laughs> it's that angle that we want. We want to take the corner off. And that takes the corner off, look. Yeah, that's perfect. You might want to use a few So 
Very nice. I like it. We definitely need to get one of those. Bloody messy though, look at it. Uh, you go first. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hang on, we'll just move it that way a little bit. There we go. Slide it in place. So, uh, just, yeah. Yeah. Pulling it, pulling it. I've got it. Yeah. But yeah, look at that. So much better. Yeah. Great Scots, it fits. <laughs> so all that's left for me to do now is treat the other side of this panel and then screw it to the side of the van. Well, let's do that, then they can dry over it instead. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this is hungry work. I wonder what Becky's up to, what she's got planned for us for lunch. I'm going to switch on my diesel cooktop, just get it ready, there we go, so we'll preheat the diesel cooktop, I'll let Becky know that I've switched it on, Let's see if she takes the hint, <laughs> she might, she might not, let's find out, let's see if she'll take, oh hello, you alright, um, I've switched the diesel cooktop on just to preheat it ready for you. Is that all right? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. We were just discussing how long it's going to take to preheat, but it probably oh, takes right. five minutes, if that. Oh, cool. There you go, she took the hint. <laughs> well, there we go. Becky's using the diesel cooktop for the fourth time. Yeah. What are we cooking? Burgers today. Yeah, burgers without the bun. Burgers without the bun. Oh, yeah, because we're on keto. Yeah. Yeah, fine. And going to wrap it in some lettuce and then I've got some extra veggies and a little bit of avocado and to top it off which is your favourite Mel wants some brie. Oh I love a bit of brie and burger. Mel melted brie and burger oh, yeah. Can't beat brie and burger. One thing though I think I'm going to get a bigger chopping board because I haven't got enough space. <laughs> Someone left a comment in the last video saying that it would be uneconomical that LPG would be cheaper well, listen to the diesel pump ticking away, if you can hear it. It's very minimal. You can't tell me that that's dearer than LPG. Well, the fact is it's nothing about dearer. It's about Safety. how do you want to cook in your van for being in a season. Yeah. You know, we're going to cook on this mainly during the winter. Use the induction in the summer. Mm. It means we don't have to have gas in the van at all. That's yeah. the reason why we, we don't want it. Yeah. We yeah. don't want gas. No, I didn't want gas at all. And someone said that these are really expensive. And yeah, they are. I think this is just a tad over £700. But I looked into getting underslung gas tanks. And I guess how much they were? Around about 700 quid. So yeah. they're not expensive when you look at it like that. If you're going to go to the trouble putting underslung gas tanks, then you've got to get the gas appliances on top of that. You're probably looking over a grand, maybe 1,200 quid for a decent cooktop and underslung <coughs> gas tank kit. Whereas with this, it's like, say 800 quid with the delivery, that's it. That's and all you've you got to pay. And you tap into the tank you've already got. So I don't see why people can say it's, it's dearer because to me, it makes economical sense. You haven't got all that hassle of looking for LPG, especially when you go abroad, you've got to find adapters and stuff to fit your LPG, LPG tank. Diesel is readily available. LPG is getting scarcer and scarcer to find, so I've been told, although it's quite- we've, Yeah, we've had no problem. It's no problem around here. There are two places around here we can fill our refillable bottles, but- we don't want gas long term. No, and if you go somewhere you're not sure about, the area, like somewhere new, then you've got to drive around looking for LPG, but with this, it's diesel. It's just simplicity living in the van. And all those people that say, oh, you know, why don't you use induction cooktop instead of this, instead of a gas cooktop? Yes, we well, do. We do. We've, <laughs> we I've do got an induction time. cooktop in my van at the moment, and I will be putting an induction cooktop in in the Vario as well and we'll use that induction cooktop in the summer but in the winter 
trying to keep your batteries charged in the winter is a real ball ache but yeah and this will keep the van warm as well yeah and yeah like you rightly say that this will not only cook our food in the winter it does give off a certain amount of residual heat and if we brought one with the lid it would double up as a heater as well but we didn't want to buy one with the lid because we didn't like the lid i just personally wanted a nice flat yeah. kitchen surface being open i didn't see the point of fitting a lovely big kitchen that we've never had before in a van and cutting up the work surface with this god ugly lid it was it, it, they don't look very nice and no. plus in the summer we can actually put the induction cooktop on top, on top of this yeah, yeah. in the winter we'll put the induction cooktop away and, and we'll use, use this, this. Yeah. heat and cooking and it all being clean and nice and easy and cheap to run what's not to love yeah so yeah to those people that left all those negative comments hopefully that answers your questions yeah and we had somebody even talk about being safe for children well the fact is is that any cooking appliance shouldn't be safe for children yeah. so it's common sense really you know, it just made us laugh <laughs> there you go, that's my little rant over that's them burgers coming in yeah they're coming along nicely yeah i think you should turn it up a bit they, they look a bit yeah but it's nice to get them heated through yeah look how much fat's coming off of them look. yeah but that's just because they're a slightly cheaper yeah. burger oh yeah still blood coming out of them all right, and we'll let you carry on because you're the expert chef after all. What do I know? I don't know nothing about cooking. So we'll see you in a bit when I've cooked it all and you can have, hopefully, a quick glimpse before it ends up in here. <laughs> Look at Monty, he's chomping at the bit for a bit of burger. Look at him. <laughs> so short, what would you give it? Marks out of 10. I would give it an eight and a half out of ten because if that was black it would be ten out of ten for me. Right. yeah yeah but in terms of functionality i suppose it would look nice black wouldn't it yeah, yeah you're right I don't, I don't, all right i'll give you that i don't know why that's silver it's a bit silly there you go jp heating if you're watching this video make one with a black surround yeah so you are becky's dishing up so i'm gonna tuck into this and then we'll get back to work i'll see you when we get back to work oops nearly knocked out your head yeah we've got to work on this <laughs> kitchen area i'm gonna go and sit down before i knock something out of becky's hands <laughs> no see you much. in a bit when we're back working on the van <laughs> well it's hard to be sexy and alluring all the time because you've got to be practical and wear clothes Especially when you're doing stuff like this, like I wouldn't want my boobs to get covered in oil on you. Mm. That must be horrible. They probably would look lovely, but I don't want them to go hard. Oh, hello. 